Welcome. Today what we're going to do is we're going to walk through a spreadsheet where we have some data collected. Here you can see group A, B, C, and D. These are random numbers generated. Um, we'll calculate the means, the standard deviation, and a confidence interval. Then we'll uh, apply that confidence interval to our mean with an upper and a lower. Uh, the reason why we're going to do that is so that we can see uh, and figure out what it means when we spit out our ANOVA. Okay, we produce an ANOVA using the data analysis tool pack. And we get all this information. We find our p-value is significant, 2.13 times 10 to the minus 23. So we know there's a significant difference in group A's, B, C, and D, but where does that significant difference lie? In a t-test where you're comparing two groups, you know, group A and B, well, obviously the difference is between A and B. But with the ANOVA single factor, we can look at many different groups. Uh, there's a significant difference, but we don't know where. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to figure out where that significant difference lies. It's already been done here for you. Um, you can see what's going to happen. Uh, we're going to graph it. And then we'll see where the significant difference lies. So let's get to work. I've already used a random number generator to get these uh, groups A, B, C, and D. So we will use it one more time to get the values for group D. Random number generation. Okay. I'm just going to have one variable. I want 20 random numbers. Uh, they can be, we can make them any type of random number generated. Uh, we'll have a uniform distribution. Between let's say uh, 2.5 and 3.5. All right, so now it generates several random numbers between 2.5 and 3.5. And I put it in the wrong spot. So I'm going to cut this and paste it here. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the average. All I have to do equals average of <coughs> bless me, these numbers. Close parentheses, enter. That's the average. Um, nice thing about Excel, I can just drag that over. And it calculates the average of all of them. Standard deviation equals STDEV, that is the thing for standard deviation, of, we're looking at C, sorry, C3, 2, C22, close parentheses. Sometimes I'll highlight and select, sometimes I'll type in the actual cell range. It works the same way, it doesn't matter how you do it. Oops, C3. And then I'll drag it over. I'll calculate the standard deviation of all those things. For a confidence interval, the alpha 0 0.05, so we're looking at the 95% confidence interval, comma, standard deviation, so it would be that cell right above it, comma, the size is how many trials I have. In this case, I wanted 20 random numbers, so I have 20 trials. And that's the confidence interval. What that means is that uh, we are 95% confident that the mean, if we redid this experiment, that the mean would lie between 5.39 plus 0.08 and 5.39 minus 0.08, which is why I want to do this mean with the upper. I'm just going to take equals this value plus that value. And this one, it'll be the lower, so it'll equal the mean minus that. And I want the same operation. 
all the way across, kind of the same operation, all the way across. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to do some rearranging because we're going to try to graph it. Copy this. And I will paste it right here. Oops. Now see, when I just did a control V for paste, it pastes the formulas. Well, those formulas are representative of the cells above it. So it has errors. These are all error messages. So I need to undo that. And I need to paste special. And I will just paste the values. So now there's not going to be formulas. It's just discrete number. There's no formula in there anymore. And I'll take my headings and I'll place them there as well. Copy them and paste them. So now I know what everything is. Now what I want to do is I want to graph this information. So I can insert a graph. And the type of graph that I want is here one of these stock graphs, high, low, close. Um, the dot in the middle will be the closing value of the stock and then you got obviously the high value and the low value. Well, this data is going to be very similar to that. I just have to arrange it the right way because the, oops, check. Uh, to create this stock chart, arrange the data in your sheet in this order, high, low, close. Use the date or the stock names as labels. Well, my labels in this case are going to be group A, B, C, and D. My high is going to be the upper. My low is going to be the lower and my uh, closing price, I'm just going to you know, play with it, it's going to be the mean. So that's going to be the middle value. Uh, and everything will be wonderful. I don't need standard deviation or confidence interval anymore. So how do we got to get, how do we do that? All I need to do is we'll take this stuff, oops, take this stuff, and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it right here, but again, I'm going to paste special and I'm going to paste, I'm going to transpose it. So now you see these guys just flip flopped. Okay. Now the rows are columns, the columns are rows. I don't need this information anymore. So I'll delete it, resize. Um, like we were saying, we don't need standard deviation and confidence interval, so I'll delete those. And we want high, low, or sorry, yes, high, low, and close. And I'll delete this guy. So now we are ready to graph. I'm just going to move it up so it looks nice. Other charts, my stock, and this is what the output is. I just need to format it. I'm going to get rid of my table right off the bat, uh, change my axis, force the minimum to be zero, maximum to be 3.5, my major unit to be one. So there's not so many lines, and the lines that are there, and we get rid of them. So now we're looking pretty good. I'll take my dot. I'm going to format that data point. Um, make it a diamond, and we'll enlarge it a little bit. Okay. Now I'll take my lines here. Or at my high-low lines. I'll change the style, change my end types to be circles because they're points, and I'll make the points small. All right, that's looking pretty good. Um, of course, we can add in a title. Uh, I could use just a general formatter to get my title bars on there. It adds in a few extra things that I can just delete. Delete. Those are data points. We don't care about those. But this is, you know, 
we are comparing the treatments. So um, we don't know what those treatments are. We don't know how we treated A, B, C, and D. But obviously, we have those different groupings for a reason. So you know, that's why I'm just titling this graph the effects of the treatments. And I did these lines that I had on there, so we get rid of those. And then this is, you know, the mean. And then we'll say we were doing plant heights, okay? Mean height in meters. We had some project that we were measuring plant heights, for example, under different treatments. So there you have it. We've got a pretty decent looking graph. What does this tell you? We knew that there was a significant difference after we did our single factor ANOVA. There was a difference between our groups. Where does that difference lie? Uh, well, the difference, it looks like it lies between all the groups. Um, if you put a, a horizontal line on this graph anywhere, we're 95% sure that the mean will lie between those two groups, okay, between those two points which would be outside the mean of those two points. And it would be outside the mean of those two points. It would be outside the mean of those two points. So there's no overlapping here. In any one of these groupings, there's no overlapping. That's why we had such a significant p-value. Um, if some of these groups overlapped, then there would be a chance that uh, the means could be the same. Right? If the means are the same, then our null hypothesis is accepted. Okay, if the means are different, then the null hypothesis is rejected. Okay, so in this case, the null hypothesis is rejected because the means are not the same, and we are 95% confident that the means will never be the same. That's all.